You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on an urban agenda for the EU. Towns and cities are home to nearly three quarters of the EU's population. This concentration poses both challenges and opportunities which call for closer cooperation between the local and the European level. This is the spirit of the urban agenda for the EU, designed to give towns and cities a greater say in EU policies. Want to know more? Come and join us in this urban journey. Urban areas lie at the very heart of modern society. They're where the economy develops, where innovation happens and where new jobs are created. They're also the main engines of our social and cultural development. But they're also where problems are at their most visible. Air pollution, transport, waste management, poverty and social exclusion. This is why many voices have been calling for a shared vision of urban development, giving cities a greater role in the design and rollout of EU policies that affect them. So after decades of debate, in May 2016, the Dutch EU presidency led to the successful signing of a political declaration, the Pact of Amsterdam, laying out the objectives and key principles of the urban agenda. But how did we get there? Well, it's been a very long process. According to the treaties, urban policy is not a competence of the EU. So urban questions have always been discussed informally between ministers. But gradually, ministers began to agree on a set of common objectives and values for urban areas and how to reach them. And so the spark took hold. In 2013, the Committee of the Regions called for the Commission to put forward a proposal for an integrated urban agenda to ensure the closer and earlier involvement of cities in the policy cycle. In July 2014, the European Commission launched a public consultation which revealed broad support among city stakeholders for an urban agenda for the EU. Based on its findings, the Commission proposed that the urban agenda focus on three priority areas – smart, green and inclusive cities. The European Parliament has also been calling for a stronger urban dimension for EU policy since 2011. In 2015, it adopted an own initiative report on this issue, calling for closer involvement of the local level at all stages of the policy cycle and ensuring that the urban agenda is in line with the EU 2020 objectives. But the real turning point came with the Riga Declaration in June 2015, as the Latvian EU presidency rallied the political support needed to push the EU urban agenda forward. And so from Riga to Amsterdam, where the main objectives of the urban agenda were finally set in stone. So what are they? Let's take a closer look. The objectives of the urban agenda are to establish a more integrated approach to EU policies and legislation which impact on urban areas, to involve urban authorities in the design of policies and to strengthen their urban dimension without creating new EU funding or transferring more competences to the EU level. And the key word here is partnerships. Strong partnerships between the European Commission, member states and local authorities, city networks and other important players to turn ambitious ideas into concrete projects to deliver the urban agenda. But how? Well, the idea is to set up three-year-long partnerships between the different players in order to identify bottlenecks and put forward proposals for strengthening the urban dimension in three main areas. Better regulation, which looks at how to give existing rules a greater urban dimension. Better use of financial instruments, which examines how to make better use of existing money. And better knowledge exchange, which considers the possible means of improving existing networks. Their work will be structured around 12 main themes such as housing, urban poverty, air quality and inclusion of migrants and refugees. These are the themes of the four pilot partnerships which were launched in November 2015 to test the ideas on the ground. Slovakia is coordinating the partnership on housing which set out to determine how to provide urban populations with good quality affordable housing. The Urban Poverty Partnership is coordinated jointly by Belgium and France and tackles poverty and the inclusion of people at risk of poverty in deprived neighbourhoods, focusing especially on child poverty and homelessness. The Partnership on Air Quality, coordinated by the Netherlands, is considering how to ensure good air quality, targeting sources of pollution such as industry, motor vehicles and agriculture. The City of Amsterdam is coordinating the Inclusion of Migrants and Refugees Partnership, which seeks to establish a framework for the integration of non-EU migrants, including access to housing, public services and employment. But how will these partnerships operate in practice? Participation is voluntary, but how will their members be selected? And how will decisions be taken? Let's find out. 
considering that each partnership will be made up of between 15 and 20 members, the International Union of Tenants has expressed concern that having only two or three civil society representatives won't be enough. In the same vein, the European Economic and Social Committee wants partnerships to ensure a more balanced representation, with greater involvement of urban residents and more information on how civil society organisations will be selected. Cities need to do more with less, responding to growing challenges but with lower budgets. This calls for innovative approaches, but cities are often reluctant to use their taxpayers' money to fund bold new ideas. So to allow cities throughout Europe to experiment with potential solutions to urban challenges, the Commission has come up with a new instrument, Urban Innovative Actions. The idea is to fund innovative and experimental ideas to test how they respond to the complexity of real life and how they can be rolled out across the EU. The first call for proposals was launched in December 2015. With a budget of 80 million euros, this call covers urban poverty, the integration of migrants and refugees, jobs and skills in the local economy and energy transition. So there is a clear link with the themes of the urban agenda. With the launch of Urban Innovative Actions, and the introduction of the first four urban partnerships, the cohesion policy framework has definitely been strengthened and the urban agenda has slowly begun to materialise. But what are the views of stakeholders? To gather support for the urban agenda, the Dutch EU presidency sought out the views of both EU advisory committees. The Committee of the Regions wants the Commission to play a strong coordinating role and calls for a review of ways of improving support for urban areas. It has suggested, for instance, using the European Investment Bank's advisory hub to help towns and cities access EIB financing instruments. To give citizens a greater say in the implementation of the urban agenda, the Economic and Social Committee suggests adding a new theme to the agenda focused on urban communities and citizen participation. The European Parliament has also called for territorial impact assessments to ensure that EU policy initiatives can be effectively implemented at local level. And MEPs also want to make it possible for people to put a face to the job by appointing an EU urban coordinator. And to make things simpler for everyone, they have also called for a one-stop shop on urban policies. The idea of an urban agenda also enjoys broad support among city stakeholders who want to go even further. Energy Cities, for instance, doesn't want to restrict the urban agenda to specific urban challenges and believes cities must play a much larger role in EU policy development in general. The mayors of the EU capital cities have called on the Commission to include the urban agenda in its annual work programme, while CEMR, the Council of European Municipalities and Regions, has warned that without strong support from the EU institutions and the member states, the urban agenda for the EU risks remaining little more than a pure political declaration. So the boat is finally in the water, but will there be enough wind for it to set sail? The Slovak EU presidency has taken over the helm and is committed to steering it ahead, yet the next months will be critical to the success of the EU's new urban adventure. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts.